If you think the thrill's gone out of driving, ease yourself into this. The 1980 Mercury Capri RS. Back in 1968, Ford of Europe introduced a fastback coupe called the Capri and began exports to the United States two years later. Sold at Mercury dealerships, but without Mercury badging. The Capri name would later be used on a rebadged American-built Ford Mustang, starting in 1979. And by 1991, it became an Australian-built 2 plus 2 convertible, made with parts shared with Mazda, where it only lasted until 1994. This is the story of three entirely different cars sold in the U.S. that were all named the Capri. This is my old car. The Capri RS from Lincoln Mercury. A touch of Europe and a lot of American car. He's on down, he's on down the road. To the sign of the cat. <laughs> Although I got several requests to feature their Capri, I suspect most requests were for just one of the multiple versions of this car as it was sold in the U.S. Or maybe the versions sold outside of the U.S. that were sold as Fords. The focus of this episode will be more on the U.S. sold versions. But if there is enough interest, I may consider featuring the Ford Capri in its own future episode. Well, frankly, I wouldn't mind a bit of life like that. How about you? Depending on your age, you may recall that the Capri, which was named after an Italian island, was originally a Lincoln. The Capri name was an upscale trim for the Lincoln Cosmopolitan in 1950. And later, the Capri became its own Lincoln model, sold between 1952 and 1959. Later in 1966, the Capri name was a trim level on the Mercury Comet. But if you were a kid in the 70s, you probably have a different memory of the Capri. When you think back to 1970, before the oil crisis really hit home, large land yachts were still popular, especially at Ford, with their Thunderbird and the Cougar over at sister division Mercury. Both of these cars are featured in their own My Old Car episodes. But over in Europe, cars are much smaller and more fuel efficient, such as the Ford Capri, whose first generation, the Mark I, debuted in 1968, although Ford in the U.S. offered the Compact Maverick beginning in 1969. Maverick! The European Capri was a foot shorter, so Ford decided to try exports of the Capri to the U.S. beginning in 1970. But instead of selling it as a Ford in the U.S., considering they already had the Maverick and the Pinto coming soon, the Capri would be sold at Lincoln Mercury dealers, although it had no badging to indicate its make. Even the commercials of the day would refer to it as just the Capri and say it was sold exclusively by Lincoln Mercury. Although the Capri in the U.S. was essentially the same as the Ford Capri Mark I in Europe, it had to adapt to American regulations, including switching from rectangular to round headlamps and repositioning the turn signals. It also had a 2-liter inline 4-cylinder engine shared with the Pinto starting in 1971, and by 1972, an optional 2.6-liter Cologne V6 was available. Bigger bumpers arrived in 1973, same as all U.S. cars back then, thanks to new 5 mile per hour bumper standards. The Ford Capri in Europe began its second generation, or Mark II, in early 1974 as a 1975 model. Capri is on the prowl. The Capri skipped its 1975 model year in the U.S., and the Ford Capri Mark II would be marketed as the Capri II in the U.S. for 1976, again with no Mercury make designation. Naming the car with a 2 on the end looks to be on the surface the same idea that Ford did with its second gen Mustang in 1974, calling it the Mustang 2. Mustang 2, it's incredible and it's mine. Although for the Mustang, that 2 was added on because the second gen Mustang was considerably different from its predecessor, now sharing some design with the Pinto in response to the oil crisis and rising competition from imports. The Capri, on the other hand, didn't change its target audience but maybe they felt the 2 designation was necessary because of a change in body style in the rear, with a small trunk lid and fixed rear window replaced with a hatchback. Just like the Ford Mustang 2, the Capri 2 maintained the Pinto's 2.3 liter 4 and continued to offer a 2.8 liter V6 as an option. But sales of the Capri 2 were not enough to justify the cost of exports to the US, ultimately causing Ford of Europe to end those exports at the end of the 1977 model year, and any remaining unsold cars were marketed as 1978 models. Ford of Europe began the Mark III version of the Ford Capri in 1978, where it tried to move the car's focus more towards performance. Performance as sporting as you like. This three liter gear does naught to 60 in 9.5 seconds and 119 miles per hour. But Ford ended up hurting its own sales of the Capri by introducing cars like the Fiesta XR2, Escort XR3, and the Sierra XR4i between 1980 and 83. That last car, the Sierra, 
would later become the basis of another import to the U.S., the Mercur, which you can learn more about in an earlier My Old Car episode. With the Capri imports ended, Ford reintroduced the Capri name in the U.S. in 1979 That's a miracle. I believe in miracles. by offering a Mercury version of the third-generation Ford Mustang, which had moved to the Fox platform. And unlike the first-gen Capri, the second-gen was marketed as a Mercury. Although the Mustang could be had as a hatchback or a coupe, the new Mercury Capri was only offered as a hatchback and it had a more squared-off front end as compared to the Mustang. But like the Mustang, the Mercury Capri offered the same engine options from the base 2.3-liter four-cylinder, an inline six, a V6, and even the five-liter V8, making this generation Capri the only one to offer a V8. But one of the most popular options was the Capri Turbo RS, with a functional hood scoop and plenty of badging, so that Mercury made sure you knew it had a turbo. Between 1979 and 1982, the rear hatch design of the Capri matched the Mustang, but for 1983, the Capri's hatch changed to a more bubble-like rear window giving it a look similar to Mercury's short-lived two-seater LN7, which was mostly a rebadged Ford EXP. Although the larger window may have aided with aerodynamics, the new look wasn't a big hit for some potential buyers. Mercury offered several special editions of the Mustang-based Capri, such as the Black Magic trim, which of course was painted black, but also had gold striping, gold wheels, and a gold cat's head on each side. Mercury was really pushing the sign of the cat marketing back then, especially for its flagship Cougar but continue to use the Cougar emblem on their other cars. Like other special editions were the Crimson Cat, the Charcoal Turbo RS, and the Mercury Motorsport Capri, which was a pace car for the 1985 Detroit Grand Prix. But the most famous special edition goes to Mercury's collaboration with ASC McLaren starting in 1984 to create higher performance coupe and convertible models. And as I noted in my Grand Prix episode, this is the same McLaren we know today for their crazy supercars. Oh, they should have called this the Widowmaker! To be clear, this coupe model was still a hatchback, so naming it as a coupe was a bit misleading. Both cars had a McLaren-designed turbocharger that brought the horsepower up to 200, which although may seem low today, could go 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 6 seconds, an impressive feat back then. Only 290 of the AAC McLaren Capri coupes were built between 1984 and 1986. The ASC side of ASC McLaren put most of their effort towards the convertible, which took the existing hatchback and redesigned much of the rear half of the car. The conversion replaced the hatch with a convertible top and trunk lid, removed the rear seats, added a hinged tonneau cover, and added lots of extra bracing to compensate for the missing roof. Even the windshield was redesigned so that it was raked back an additional 10 degrees. I think he made me. I'm dropping off. I'll pick you seven. Roger, I'll pick him up. Considering that this generation of Capri was a rebadged Mustang, which itself was offered as a convertible, with a back seat, it seems odd to me that they didn't just use that existing body structure instead of redesigning the hatchback. Only 557 of the convertibles were built between 1984 and 1986. Overall sales of the second gen Capri did come close to the Mustang sales, so when the third gen Mustang was ready for its mid-cycle refresh in 1987, Mercury chose to end the Capri with the 1986 model year rather than doing another redesign along with the Mustang. Capri White Lightning, catch it, because it's going fast. The Capri name was discontinued for not just the Mercury brand in 1986, but that same year was also the end of the Ford Capri in Europe. <laughs> the Capri 2.8 injection, the last hurrah of the common man's coupe. But Ford had new plans for the Capri, and would turn to their partner Mazda to help supply parts for the new Capri, which would share absolutely nothing with its predecessor, as it would be sold only as a convertible. The Ford Capri began production in Australia in 1989, with an engine and drivetrain borrowed from the Mazda 323, which was also sold in the US as the first-gen Mercury Tracer. The outer body shell was designed by partner Ghia, and the interior designed by Ital Design. It would launch in Australia the same year as the car that helped inspire it, the Mazda Miata, which today is more commonly known as the MX-5. Although many consider the new Ford Capri and Mazda Miata to be direct competitors, which was a bit ironic since they shared many parts. In two important ways, they were not the same. The Miata was rear-wheel drive and only had two seats, whereas the Capri was front-wheel drive and had a two-plus-two configuration, although only small children could fit in the rear seats. But the goal of the Ford Capri wasn't to stay in Australia. Ford had its sights set on the United States to sell the Capri as a Mercury and began exports to the U.S. starting with the 1991 model year, making the Capri come full circle back to being a captive import. 
but this time they marketed it as a Mercury. And like the original first gen Capri, it was an untypical Mercury in that it had no rebadged Ford counterpart. Because of the similar size and look between the third gen Capri and the Miata, many would incorrectly refer to the Capri as a Roadster, a name that, at least in my opinion, and I suspect others will agree, should only apply to rear wheel drive, two seater convertibles. Being a convertible was the only common feature between the two cars. Well, that and the fact that they both had Mazda B series engines, both had pop-up headlamps, and both cars offered a removable hardtop. So I suppose for non-car people, it's easy to see why the two cars were considered competitors. The Capri even had a small bit of practicality in that its rear seats folded down to gain access to the trunk. Like the Miata, the engines were small, a four-cylinder making only 100 horsepower, but for a car that weighed less than 2,500 pounds, or less than 1,200 kilograms, that 100 horsepower wasn't all that bad, at least back then. Think of it as a steel bikini. Sadly, unlike the good reputation the Miata earned for its reliability, the Capri suffered over the next couple years. No wonder if people bought the optional hardtop. Primarily due to a leaking roof. Although Ford was able to fix the issue relatively quickly, the poor reputation hung on. It also didn't help that true sports car lovers didn't take the Capri seriously with its front-wheel drive design. In 1992, an XR2 trim was offered with a turbo, increasing the horsepower to 132, and it came standard with a 5-speed manual. But this improvement didn't provide the sales jump that Mercury wanted. Go Barbie, go! The Capri's other sales hurdle was that the typical Mercury customer was more interested in cars like the Sable or Grand Marquis, not a little convertible. So the Capri never fit in well on the Mercury sales floor. 1994 would be the last model year for both the Ford and Mercury Capri models with a total of 66,279 built, with just under 56,000 sold in the US, which averages to only around 14,000 per year. Today, seeing any Capri is a rare sight, and although the third gen convertibles are the newest, they were also the smallest number sold, and when any owner tells others they own a Capri, they always have to clarify if it was the European, the American, or the Australian version. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. Talk.